Happy Sunday, everybody. Welcome back into the card closet for another episode. Today we're going to talk about this past week's announcement by Major League Baseball that they're now considering the Negro Leagues a major league and that those statistics from that league will be incorporated into Major League statistics. And I want to talk about it in terms of the all-time home run king. I've not heard anybody talk about this yet. So we've got the all-time home run king right now, Barry Bonds. Here he's represented with his 1993 Topps Black Gold. Barry Bonds sits at 762. And in second place, Hank Aaron, represented by his 1958 Topps card. So... One of these guys played in the Negro Leagues and hit home runs in the Negro Leagues. And I bet you can guess which one it was. It was Hank Aaron. He played one season in the Negro Leagues. And I had remembered that because uh, the Indianapolis Clowns was the team name. And that has always kind of just stuck in my memory, that unique team name. And so when I heard this news, my mind immediately went to the all-time home run list because I knew Hank Aaron would get credit for home runs that were hit in the Negro Leagues. He needs seven to tie Barry Bonds. The one year Hank Aaron played in the Negro Leagues, add that total to his home run total. Anybody want to make a guess? He hit five that year which puts Hank Aaron at 760, too short of Barry Bonds. Now, I'm a statistics freak, and so I, I love devouring baseball statistics especially. And so this announcement now gives me another league with a bunch of statistics that I need to dive into. And I've begun doing that, baseball-reference.com is the best source that I've been able to find so far. And unfortunately, a lot of the statistics from that league are incomplete. So if you pull up somebody like Turkey Stearns, who is arguably the greatest hitter ever from the Negro Leagues, uh, his statistics are incomplete. There are three or four seasons where he does not have totals uh, because box scores or whatever are not available from games those years and some games they some years they just have partial so it's adding these statistics to the major league record is not going to affect too much um, they're not complete so players will actually as they dive in and that's what I've heard they're gonna do as they dive in to these older Negro League games and find out what the actual stats were from the games you're going to see players from those from that league their totals will go up as more and more box scores are discovered so that just goes to show um, that it's a big world out there and we have to think about you know when we talk about the major leagues we're now talking about more than just the american league and the national league which i think is great so in my research on the Negro League statistics, I found that most of the years, the teams only played about 40 to 50 games. And, you know, the league leader in home runs might have, might be lucky if they hit 10. So it's not going to be a big change on the all-time lists. Um, some of the things like 400 hitters, you know, Turkey Stearns, I saw did hit 400 three times. Um, you know, usually did it with about 150 at-bats or so. So would he have sustained that over 162 game schedule and the today required 501 plate appearances? We'll never know. He might have. He very well might have. So that'll just make the conversation that much more interesting. Josh Gibson is another name that comes up when it comes to home run totals from the Negro Leagues. It's estimated he hit over 900 in all games. But the majority of games that his teams played were exhibition games, traveling barnstormer type tours. And they didn't they were not official 
Negro League games against other Negro League teams. So they don't count. Uh, on the official register, he has, you know, a little over 200, I think it is. So not going to be a big change to things. And, oh, by the way, upon further review, they're only going to count the Negro League stats through 1948 as being Major League. So Hank Aaron missed that by about three years. So his, I believe it was 1951 or 1952 season with the five home runs, doesn't count. So Hank Aaron's back to 755. All right, I want to share a couple Christmas cards I've gotten in the mail from fellow YouTubers. I got a nice one here from Aaron's Collecting and Detecting. Check out his channel if you haven't already. He's doing a trivia question a day for the month of December. And if you get if you win, get one of the trivia questions answered correctly, he sends you cards of your favorite players. And so he sent me this Nomar Garcia Parra, Pedro Martinez, and Chris Sale. Three of my all-time favorite players. So Aaron, thank you very much for that. I appreciate it. And then I did get a card from Back to the Cardboard. Nice Christmas card here from Shannon there. And he sent me 1979 Carlton Fisk card. He knows that I'm a Red Sox fan. And actually, this card is in such good condition, it's going to replace the one in my set. It is an upgrade by far. So thank you, Shannon, for that. And then the personalized, personally autographed Shannon Ham card. Is this your rookie card, Shannon? Doesn't say it is, but I'm wondering if it is. Looks like he just stepped off the set of the A-Team. If you're my age, you know what I'm talking about. And then also a shout-out to ThinkBlue77, who in a recent video was talking about his... Uh, some die cast collectibles that he had and he encouraged me to show some die casts so I put my Jacques Villeneuve Formula One cars in the background there. I am a huge Formula One fan. And then before we go, you know Shannon at Back to the Cardboard is usually a very precise, accurate guy but he did have a little bit of a typo on the back of the envelope here. So I'm going to correct that before we go. There we go. Much better. Glad to help, Shannon. <laughs> so the rest of you, uh, I know we're in Christmas week heading up. I'm going to try to produce content over the next couple of weeks. Uh, but if I don't, have a Merry Christmas with your family and friends. I hope whatever type of gathering you end up having this year is blessed. Don't forget the real reason for the season. Baby Jesus in the manger in Bethlehem. Talk to you soon. Thanks for stopping by. Talk to you later.